Hey everyone, Wolf Lovro here. Today we are discussing the Adeptus Mechanicus and the fall of a Forge World. A spoiler warning to begin, as the events we're discussing today are from the Warhammer 40k novel Dominion Genesis by author Jonathan D. Beer. As always, I really recommend you read the stories for yourself first without spoilers as that's the best way to enjoy the lore for yourself. But with that said, let's waste no time and just jump straight in. Okay, so the universe of Warhammer 40k is really defined by two distinct time periods. The rise of the Emperor, the golden age of the Great Crusade and its brutal ending, and then the grim dark of the current Imperium the eternal battle for survival. And it's one of the reasons the grim darkness of the Imperium is so appealing, because it is so perfectly contrasted with the brightness of its birth. How close the Emperor's dream came to fruition, a golden destiny of promise on the cusp of being achieved all turned to the stagnation and paranoia of the Imperium's eventual survival. Because that's what the Imperium is, mere survival. For the past 10,000 years, humanity has been simply surviving, as best it can, as the galaxy raised fret after fret. And yet for every world that survives, one inevitably falls. And we've seen a fair amount of that within the lore over the years. A valiant effort of the Imperium never enough, or a victory merely in name only, as a world is expunged by the Imperium's own hand. However, we rarely, if ever, get to see the Mechanicum's reaction to this fate. How they react to a world of theirs lost. One of their mighty forge worlds, Fallen. And that's what we're going to be discussing over the next two uploads, because that's exactly what we would get to see within the novel Dominion Genesis, by author Jonathan D. Beer. If you missed my review on this novel a while ago, it's an absolutely astounding read. One of the best openings and introductions to a novel I've ever read. So it's one I really recommend reading without spoilers if you haven't for yourself first. It was an easy 5 out of 5 blessed by the Emperor for me. Or I guess that should be Omnissiah. But again, honestly, it was a fantastic read from beginning to end. And one I thoroughly recommend. But anyway, it was within this that a forge world known as Griffon IV would fall in the path of the arriving Hive Fleet Leviathan. And I found it a really interesting premise, how not only the people of the Mechanicus would react, but how a forge world itself would respond. The mighty bastions of the Mechanicus's power. Would they call for aid? Or would they remain steadfast, seek to defeat the foe with the grace of the Omnissiah? And for Griffon IV, it appeared to be both. Hundreds of vessels, each emblazoned with the ident flag of their home, crowd Griffon IV's orbit. The sight and sensation of so many ships brings a small measure of calm to my animus. I draw strength from the gathered might of my people. The Forge World is prepared for the storm that falls upon it. The precursor signs of Tyranid invasion had been identified months before this day, primarily geological instability caused by the Xeno's strange form of interstellar travel, which drew upon the gravity of the Griffon star itself to pull them towards their goal. More subtle, but no less disruptive, were the waves of sabotage, assassination and ambush that erupted within every forge city and population centre, 
Reports reached the Peregrinus, telling of the genomic perversion among the surf class and running battles with Xeno-worshipping sects that had burst from their slums. The Forge World was gripped by war before the first bioship caught sight of the Griffon Star. These signs were heeded. The strength of Griffon IV's arms is famed across the length and breadth of humanity's realm, and the Dominars of the Forge Synod had not been idle in preparing its defences. The call went out to the Forge World's allies and vassals, to its tributary worlds and its far-flung fleets. It is that call that has brought the Peregrinus back, racing through the Immaterium's tides so its crew can stand with their home in its hour of need. So, we can see how the Forge World has had a luxury that many other worlds aren't party to within the Imperium. Advance warning, knowing the signs of the threat that approaches. For many worlds within the Imperium, the Tyranid assault descends from the heavens after weeks of unexplained communication blackouts. A sudden and complete silence from the rest of the Imperium around them or transport corridors ominously ceasing, even perhaps gene stealer cult uprisings being mistaken for mere rebels, instead of the true sign of doom that they represent. Because it's worth remembering, knowledge of all the foes the Imperium faces is actually not widespread, especially the doom that the Tyranids represent. So, a lot of worlds out there simply have no idea what the signs may be, or just what doom is approaching their world. But of course here Griffon IV did, as a Mechanicus Forge world you'd expect no less. Knowledge is their way of life, their eternal purpose. They saw the signs and knew exactly what they meant. And as it stated, they looked to their own strength, banking on the might of the Omnissiah and calling back their fleet from across the stars. The call went out to the Forge World's allies and vassals, to its tributary worlds and its far-flung fleets. And yet, even here we see, despite being a truly powerful Forge World, immersed in the Cult Mechanicus, Still, the Gene Stealer cults had infested the depths of the world, prepared themselves to launch their attack and cause devastation. And it's a testament to how adaptable and versatile the Gene Stealers are. How truly, no world is safe from them. Not even one so immersed in the machine. But so, the call went out to what appears to be predominantly fellow Mechanicus forces, be it ones of Griffon's own might, or those who owe them fealty. A little reminder that the Forge Worlds of the Mechanicus are far more than one single world, each of them a mini-empire in their own right. And one of the responders who received this call, and came running immediately, was the point of view we see, a Mechanicus explorator named Talin Sherax, who commands the vessel the Peregrinus and calls Griffon for home. As part of explorator fleet Re Alpha 2, the Peregrinus and accompanying vessels have raced to return home, to be a part of the Forge World's defence, only to arrive too late. The sight as they enter in system is a horror. Even the scans of the Mechanicus unable to process the sheer scale of the enemy. And you couldn't be more wrong to think the Mechanicus immune to fear in such a situation. Because fear can take many forms. An emotional, instinctive response. And a logical appraisal of loss. The eradication of something important, something valued. 
And there's a single passage that perhaps shows how the Mechanicus have to deal with fear on another level entirely. It takes me a moment to grasp the problem. My vessel is afraid. The fears of its crew and its ductrix are bleeding into the Peregrinus's soul, conveyed by every panicked runeballed strike, unguarded voxburst, and elevated heart rates. Every fearful action is absorbed and aggregated by the millions of sensory inputs around and within my ship, infecting its animus with thoughts of ruin and loss. An aspect those of the Imperium would be immune to, oblivious. Yet here with Talon, we can see how even the machine spirit of her vessel is reeling from the collective dread of its crew. The knowledge that the cradle of its birth is threatened. That's an aspect we'd never get to see and understand outside the Mechanicus. And it's really interesting to consider, adding a whole other element to the encounter. And of course, the Re-Alpha 2 fleet would immediately set course for the Forge World, burning their engines to maximum to reach it, desperate to add their strength to the defense. However, they're still days away helpless to do anything other than watch the encounter on their scanner. And that's another intriguing element often taken for granted. Just because you arrive in system, doesn't mean you're there, so to speak. Warp translation points are virtually always at the edge of a system. For safety, you're still looking at days, if not weeks, to reach the inner planets of a system's core where inevitably the populated worlds are, as is the case here. Yet, as the Peregrinus and the rest of the Explorator fleet gets closer and closer to the Forge World, the situation only continues to get worse. The Forge World's orbital defences fall silent. Some are literally swallowed by the largest of the Tyranid bioships. The colossal web of Voyageards, whose wolves have sent forth vessels to ply the void for ten millennia, is rendered into scrap by devouring maws and crushing claws, its fragments overrun by broods of gaunt genus beasts. The seething mass of Leviathan consumes the Dioscuri, Griffon 4's twin fortress moons, on the third day of the invasion. The two orbs emerge barren, entirely swept clean of life. The scars of radiological detonations are carved across the surface of Dioscuri Alpha, and hundreds of bioship corpses tumble in the planetoid's wake. Few static defences remain above Griffon IV, but the Void War is far from abandoned. Absent any action I can take to influence events, I drink in every data packet and missive devoting much of my active cognition to tracking the evolution of the Battlesphere. The space around the Forge World is swamped with the electric blaze of weapons discharge, the constant churn of exotic energies and bioplasma. Void shields stutter, chitinous armour shatters, skeletons of both metal and bone break under the strain of the violence that dances around them. At the centre of the Griffonian Armada is the Logos, the venerated Arch Mechanicus of Arch Dominus Zane, encircled by its guardian battle fleet. The Logos is the headland, the breaker upon which the Tyranids founder. Death streams from its flanks, arcane weaponry eviscerating whichever creature comes within their reach. No hive ship can approach the embodiment of Mechanicus Dominion and live. An Arc Mechanicus is a forge world in miniature, suspended in space, armed and armoured accordingly. Gravitation, electromagnetism, the flow of time itself, the Logos harnesses the fundamental interactions of the physical universe 
and turns them into weapons. But for all its might, the Ark Mechanicus and its lesser brethren cannot be everywhere. You can just feel the sheer overwhelming tide of the Tyranids here. How it's nothing but endless. And just imagine the sight, the moment, a Forgeworld's orbital defences fall silent. A Forgeworld, one of the most powerful places in the entire Imperium, behind only the likes of Mars and Terra themselves. A place where the mere notion of enemy attack, let alone defeat, is inconceivable. And then the guns begin to fall silent, just drowned in the sheer weight of Tyranids. First, the Forgeworld orbital defences fall silent. A simple sentence really, yet one where you immediately feel that weight of dread in your gut. A massive dent in that hope you were clinging onto. Because let's not forget, technology is the Mechanicus. The defences of a Forge World would be the best technology they could employ. A mark of pride. An open declaration to the rest of the galaxy. To not even think about it. So them falling silent is akin to a banner of your colours being taken on the ancient battlefields of old. A sight of pure horror, and a moment of significant meaning. Some things that probably even harder for the servants of the Omnissiah than we can realise, who would immediately know the calculations and impact of the defence's loss, all intertwined with the primitive shock of the moment. The probability of victory becoming even more remote. And another standout is the Ark Mechanicus, vessels of incomparable power, mobile forge worlds in their own right, yet the Tyranids simply pour on and past it, that no matter how much death the Ark pours out, it's simply not enough. The ripple of stones dropped into a flowing river, the high fleet caring only with devouring the world, letting nothing stop them from reaching its goal. And as the Explorator fleet finally makes it to less than one day away, on the verge of joining in the defence of their home, the order and contact finally comes in with the Forge World. The defence has failed. Prepare for refugees. Whether Mechanicus or Imperium, as so often when confronted by the might of a hive fleet, it ends with a simple and desperate evacuation, as a world is consigned to its fate. And it's here, in the disbelief of receiving the order, that the Explorator fleet would pierce the numberless Tyranids in orbit to receive the fleeing vessels of their world. As a world still completely and utterly gripped in war, spares what it can. And we get a very unique view of just what a dying forge world does in its final moments. Out of the carnage comes every kind of craft capable of making orbit. Into orbit lifters, cargo shuttles, nightly drop keeps, the rarest are the coffin ships of the Legio Griffonicus, bearing away the few precious titans that can be extracted from the front line without risking its collapse. All light their engines and burn through the tortured sky, struggling through an atmosphere choked with the dust of dead cities. The escaping craft are not burdened with bodies, the 8.5 billion labourers, serfs and menials whose toil has fueled the ceaseless output of a world are the least of the Forge World's losses, 
Human life is the cheapest and most easily replenished of all the resources the Mechanicus requires, and thus is the first to be abandoned. They flee with data, precious data, the accumulated knowledge of an empire, the true legacy, the source of Griffonian pride and strength, from the monumental blueprints for battle tanks, instructions for feats of genomic manipulation, the most carefully guarded secrets of the Legio Griffonicus, records of production quotas exceeded or missed, tithe and census data stretching back across the centuries, all that the Forge World Magi have learnt across 10,000 years of labour is hurled into orbit, in the hope that it might survive beyond the planet's fall. In typical Mechanicus fashion, it's not the lives they seek to save, but the knowledge, the history, the machine. Everything that makes the Forge World what it is. What a brutal but expecting description. The human lives are the first to be abandoned. It's perhaps the defining difference between the Imperium and the Adeptus Mechanicus. The fundamental opposed logic and view. For the Lord Commander Gilliman, it's the people that make the Imperium what it is. The core reason for why he does everything he does. Why he continues to fight. Yet here for the Adeptus Mechanicus, the decision makers of Griffon IV, they prioritise the knowledge, the machine. As gargantuan titans are lifted into orbit, data banks filling transport holds, in space of thousands, if not millions of human lives. Again, it's not a surprise to see what the Mechanicus prioritises in those final moments. But it's still, after all these years, kind of shocking that a Titan, a machine, would be saved over thousands of human lives. It's a cold logic, that is for sure. And a real contrast to that still human emotion that we can see still react within them. Let's be clear here, 8.5 billion souls have been abandoned on Griffon IV. For data, the Forge World deems more important. Okay, the believed most important secrets of the Legio, but they're also exporting census data. Census data? Can you imagine that? You're a Skitari serving on the front line, spending what remains of your life in a valiant sacrifice against the Tyranids, watching these vessels take off and head for orbit and a hope of safety. And your mate next to you goes, don't worry, at least they're taking last year's census records with them. I mean, come on now. There's prioritising data, and then there's just taking the mick. But at the end of the day, that's most likely the flaw with the Adeptus Mechanicus. The extreme they take their logic to. Because it's not just the important data, it's all data that is important, precious to them. All that so Griffon IV can live on, at least in some manner. And that's what we'll be discussing next. Just what refugees of a fallen Forge World do. How they live on. But as always everyone, what do you think? Does it surprise you to still see the Mechanicus act in such a way in the final moments of a Forge World's life? That they would actively try to save a Titan over thousands of human lives. Let alone, let alone census data. Or again, is it that fundamental difference in view that makes the Mechanicus what it is? 
As always everyone, leave your thoughts in the comments below. A huge thank you to all my subscribers, your support truly means a lot to me, it really does. If you're new, please consider subscribing to help the channel grow. And if you enjoyed this particular vid, then why not drop a like on it too. But with that said, I am off, and I'll see you all again real soon.